One of the biggest challenges we uh, ran into right away when we arrived on our off-grid property was two things. One, power. Everything takes power. We started with a generator and that's really good for on-demand power, but it's not so good for things that take continuous power. And the other thing was food preservation. So a, a typical household is going to have a pretty good sized refrigerator. Even nowadays they have these double door, huge freezer, like everything's big. You can store, you know, a couple weeks worth of food. And uh, we haven't been able to do that since we got here. Um, Alyssa worked really hard this summer to learn how to can. We've been foraging and collecting food and that's working really well for food preservation. But the weak point in our food preservation system has been freezer space. Now we know it's not a good idea always to rely on freezers. So a root cellar is in the plans, but it's not gonna happen right away. You can't just run down and buy one of those. So uh, because we have recently been working on upgrading our solar, we're not finished with it yet, but we do have a lot more power available now um, that is sustained power, which is perfect for running uh, an appliance like a chest freezer. So we finally made the decision to upgrade our freezer space. We're gonna be moving into a small chest freezer. We thought we'd just share the uh, thinking behind that, kind of the sizing, roughly how much power does it take? So you can kind of understand the challenges of choosing such an appliance when you're living off grid. Before deciding to upgrade to a chest freezer, we actually pulled this little guy out of storage. Before we moved to our property, we had a really weird series of events and our refrigerator died unexpectedly right before leaving on a trip. And because we thought we'd be moving, we didn't buy a big fridge. We just bought this little guy to get us by, but it's been sitting in storage. So we pulled this out thinking, you know what, we'll just use this. It's got a little freezer. It'll kind of add to our freezer space. Um, and it has a little bit of fridge space, but we don't really need more fridge space. We're pretty fine on that because we can only uh, eat so much food at a time. The problem with these little refrigerators is that their power consumption is quite a bit higher than a chest freezer for two reasons. One, when you open the door, the cold air escapes out the bottom. Um, by nature of front design, all the cold air is going to escape. Um, that's bad because you just spent a lot of energy trying to cool down the air. Uh, the second thing is that the wall thickness on the uh, box is not very thick. They're meant to be very compact. In exchange, you use more energy to keep that cool air inside. A chest freezer typically has a much thicker insulation, which is what makes them more efficient. It's not so much that the components are more efficient, more that the thickness of the walls is uh, more efficient. Kind of like a cooler, like a, an outdoor cooler. If it has a really thin wall, it won't keep ice very long but if it has a thick wall, it'll keep ice longer. So we decided to retire this. We'll probably sell it and find another home for it. We found out that the uh, wattage use on this model is over 100 watts per day more on average than in a little bit larger, I think it's actually twice as big, chest freezer. So when looking at chest freezers, we found that they're much more energy efficient. And this goes back to the point that everything takes power. In fact, this kind of a joke, a lot of times when our neighbor comes over and talks to us a little bit about what we're doing, he often starts most suggestions with what you should do is get, and then realizes we don't have power. So we can't plug everything in. So when we did a little research on chest freezers, we found that the five cubic foot little models run somewhere estimated around 220 kilowatts or 1,000 watts per year. That's kind of hard to understand for the average person, but if you take that and divide it by 365, which are the days in a year, you'll come up with around 600 watt hours per day average. Now, research shows that in the winter, these don't take hardly any power because it's so cold outside, they don't need much power to keep them cool inside. It's during the summer when the power consumption really goes up. That works great because solar, for us, produces a lot more power in the summer. We don't really know what our power usage will be in the winter, but we're working on that. This uh, freezer uses 220 kilowatts per year. The small refrigerator over there was, I think, 336 or 340 kilowatts. So you can see it's a third more, 50% more, actually. Uh, this is a third less than the small stand-up uh, refrigerator but our freezer capacity is 10 times that of this small fridge. So that's why we chose this one, and we calculated this out to be around 600 watt hours per day, which we can get with our solar system right now with one hour of good, good sun. 
So a couple things about this freezer that were very specific uh, in our selection. One, we bought this model at Sears. It's a Kenmore. It just so happens that they had a really great sale yesterday. And so we picked this up for $189. Um, we found this five cubic foot freezer from around $150 to about $250, depending on when and where you buy it. But the reason we bought this from Sears is in our experience, they tend to stand behind their appliances. These really shouldn't wear out, but just in case they do, we wanted to be with a company that stands behind their products. We did find it locally, but that company doesn't really stand behind their stuff that well. They're kind of like a mom and pa shop and getting good service there, we're not really sure. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, factor that into your decision, not just the price. The biggest threat for most people with using freezers is not realizing that their freezer quit and you'll lose all of the food or you're under threat to losing all the food in your freezer. So when we were looking at these models, we found some freezers had an indicator light for when they're under power and other cheaper models did not. So if the food that's in your freezer means anything to you, having this small light should be a really good peace of mind feature. We can just quickly look at the freezer and make sure that it's under power. Uh, if for some reason that light goes off, we know we need to look at it. This one little feature on our RV fridge has been a lifesaver because sometimes we run out of propane and where it's very obvious that our, our refrigerator is not operating properly. In wiring in our inverter charger, I gave myself a couple of options by adding a load box, and there's two separate circuits. One circuit is dedicated to our RV, and I wanted the ability to shut off our RV alone, just in case we needed to do some work on the RV or something, but I didn't want to risk simultaneously shutting off the freezer. So I've actually got a separate circuit over here that will be running that freezer, which gives us the ability to shut the RV off and leave the uh, critical appliances on. As far as where to put the deep freezer, it's really common for folks who live off-grid up here to take these types of appliances and stick them out on the front porch during the winter because they're heating the inside of their home, which means that appliance is only going to work harder. But if you shove it outside where it's uh, sub-freezing, it may not even have to work at all. We don't really have the ability to do that because we're using our RV garage and our cabin for protection. So we do have a hot side and a cold side though to this contraption we're using. And we'd like to put it as far to the front as possible. That way uh, it's cold up here and it's as far away from the wood stove as possible. Because we ran our wood stove last winter, we know that the temperatures up here stay around 35 degrees most of the winter, which should be perfect. Hopefully that freezer won't have to run much at all. All right, freezer's all installed and ready to go. We're not gonna plug that in though for about 24 hours because we've been monkeying it and turning it upside down. It's been laying on its back in the car. It's not a good idea. Uh, so we're gonna wait about a day to plug it in. According to the manual, we need to wait about four hours uh, from the time we plug it in until we can load food in it to allow the freezer to get good and cold. Uh, we're hoping we'll have a really sunny day tomorrow and that means we should be able to go ahead and get that freezer through its initial cycle just off the solar alone. But in case it's not, uh, our inverter charger, that's one of the reasons this is such a critical component because if the solar is just not putting out enough, we can plug our generator into the inverter charger and it will both charge our batteries and also power our small grid here. So if we have to, we'll go ahead and get that running. For now, that's all set up. We'll pause this video and we'll jump back in once we've had a chance to get the freezer going. All right, got the freezer all hooked up and turned on. We've only had modest sun the last couple of days. Um, we did pause this video for a couple of days. And so we ended up running the generator just a little bit um, because this was draining our battery bank just a little bit. Um, I think the current draw on this little freezer though turned out to be about half an amp AC, which is pretty good. I'm impressed. That's about five amps DC, 12 volts. And so we were able to get this to a negative six degrees Fahrenheit in about an hour. So pretty efficient. We did add some ice cream and some uh, meat that we purchased at the store the other day. And it did have to kick on just a little bit to cool those items down. But overall, it's not taking very much power at all. So I do have a confession. This video sounds like we know what we're talking about, but really it's just a desperation video. And I'll tell you why. Because this summer we picked a whole bunch of fresh huckleberries in our backyard, and then we turned it into ice cream. And until now, our neighbors were super nice and let us keep it at their house but they're running out of space because it's hunting season. So, the problem is this. This liquid gold is why we had to upgrade to a freezer. Granted, upgrading the solar was something we needed to do anyway, and freezer space we needed to do anyway because now we can collect meats and other things that we couldn't otherwise. But we'll be honest with you, this is the motivating factor right now, huckleberry ice cream. Hmm, two of my favorite things in the world, huckleberry ice cream and power tools. Mm. Oh, Jesse doesn't love me.
Jesse loves Alyssa. Jesse loves ice cream. Jesse loves Alyssa. Jesse loves ice cream. All right, so we're super excited to have more food storage capacity here on the homestead. And of course, these little novelties like ice cream don't hurt either. Um, we'll kind of keep you updated long term how this works out. But food preservation was something we wanted to get added to the homestead really, really bad. So this is awesome. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our off-grid homesteading project, we're working on getting our cistern in before winter. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we're sure going to try. And uh, we've got some kind of cool stuff, solar stuff coming too. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on our blog, our Facebook, and our Instagram. We'll put links to all those fun things in the description below. We'll see you next time. One of the biggest challenges we uh, ran into right away when we arrived on our off-grid property was two things. One, power. Everything takes power. We started with a generator and that's really good for on-demand power, but it's not so good for things that take continuous power. And the other thing was food preservation. So a, a typical household is going to have a pretty good size refrigerator. Even nowadays they have these double door, huge freezer, like everything's big. You can store, you know, a couple weeks worth of food. And uh, we haven't been able to do that since we got here. Um, Alyssa worked really hard this summer to learn how to can. We've been foraging and collecting food, and that's working really well for food preservation. But the weak point in our food preservation system has been freezer space. Now we know it's not a good idea always to rely on freezers. So a root cellar is in the plans, but it's not gonna happen right away. You can't just run down and buy one of those. So uh, because we have recently been working on 